Okay, so you know, I'm, yes, I'm present, uh, Driti. Okay, after the class, I'll mark you present. Okay, okay ma'am. So there are some mechanisms by which the government earns revenue. Okay, because now we are talking about a system where parallel to market there is another body in the system and this body is the government and we are telling that government will do this do that because you know uh, the market price may be too high the market price may be too low so we are pointing out that government intervention is required apart from these when you will go on, you will find that there are bridges, dams, etc., where huge investment is required. Okay, and the time point when you will start to profit something that period is very long. We call it the gestation period, you know, when you are investing and when you are starting to make some profit out of your business. This is called the gestation period. Now, the gestation period may be long for certain commodities as well as services. Like I told you, preparing bridges, dams, you know, metro railway, all these things, for all these things, we need a huge investment, number one, and number two, long gestation period. Many a times, you maybe you are familiar with the term public-private partnership. So many a times it happens some private partners will be also there along with the public body or the government. However, under other context, you will find that only the government is arranging for this kind of things. Street lights, okay? So all these things are there. Now, for doing all these things, to running the entire system, government needs some revenue. So taxation is a mechanism by which government collects some revenue. There are some other mechanisms as well. So there are few students who came from economics background or did economics at plus two level, you know. So any one of them can tell us what can be the other mechanisms as well to collect the revenue apart from tax. Anyone? Fines, public mm. expenditure. For public Fines expenditure, I am telling, we have to have some money. We are understanding and government has some expenditure. Okay, so revenue, now I want to know the revenue side, from where the government will earn. What are the different sources of earning income? One is taxation. Export. Export. Okay. So Man. it's not the right one, yes. Yes, please continue. Ma'am, fiscal policy. Fiscal policy, what does it mean? That we don't understand. We don't know anything about math. Ma'am, custom so, duties. Custom duties, it is a kind of tax. This is coming the taxation. Custom duties is a kind of tax. No, fines can also be there. Fines can also be there, yes. What are the three major sources of revenue? Those who did economics at class two level, they should know all these things. Ma'am, public debt. Ma'am, public debt. Debt, yes. Public debt is very important, you know. Uh, in the media, we find that from the media, we know that, you know, um, our regular news events, we know that the government is taking this much of loan from WHO, World Health Organization, or World Bank, or IMF, International Monetary Fund. State government is 
taking loan from the central government. Central government is taking loan from this body. State governments are taking loan from this body. So these are called Ma debt, D B T, public debt. Yes, very good. Public Ma debt is another PSU. important source. PSUs selling their products. Selling the products. Selling the products, yeah. Uh, services and services. And services. Selling the products and the services, okay. Ma'am, from Ma this is this is by selling of the assets. So it's a very bad example. Okay, we are already bankrupt, and you are making us more bankrupt. Printing the currency, printing the currency. Only government can do this. We cannot do this. Any private organization cannot do this or should not do this. If they do so, it is a malpractice. You know. So printing currencies. So three most important sources of revenue is. Taxation, public debt, DEBT debt, you know. So under this, you know, government may sell some security papers and take loans from the individuals as well. Many a times we purchase government bonds. So selling bonds or taking directly money uh, from other organizations, all these are coming under the head of debt, public debt. And the third important source is printing the currency, printing the currency. OK, so these are the three major sources of revenue of the government. In this general class, I'll talk about something related to taxation. OK, and one group will prepare their project on subsidy 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 will be the reverse of taxation in case of taxation i'm taking away the money in case of subsidy i am giving money for some incentive okay so you know if commodity price is say 10 rupee per unit and if there is government subsidy of 2 rupees for this particular commodity in that case, I need to pay only eight rupees. Two rupees will directly go from government to the seller. Or if there is subsidy on selling price, in that case, you know, price will be charged following the cost of production. Okay. So some part of the cost will be, uh, you know, will be. Uh, Carry, uh, carried by the government or the public organization and for that matter the price with the market price for the commodity will be not exactly equal to the cost of production or just something above the cost of production it will be not that rather it will be lesser than that because a part of the cost is given to the sellers by the government. So government is bearing that load. Okay. So that part is going to the government. Uh, sorry, that part is given by the government in the form of subsidy to the sellers. So the other part only, on the basis of the other part of the cost only, the producers will charge the market price for the commodity. Okay, so there will be some incentive in the form of subsidy, either to the consumers or to the producers or, you know, both. So there may be this kind of thing. Okay, now there are different types of commodities in the reality. Now, if we consider milk, milk we call a merit want, I'm writing. Okay, so there are several commodities, you know, or services which we call merit wants. 
whatever be the income of the family a child needs some milk or aged people belonging to the family need some milk whatever be the income of the household the children need some basic education at least now what is the definition of basic now there may be some controversy regarding that that may be literacy that may be up to class 5 education that may be secondary level education that may be graduate level education okay however i hope you are understanding whatever be the income of the family the children need education so you will find that though there are private organization for providing education always there is a system of public school public colleges public universities like us okay presidency is a public institution okay so i think the fees you pay for reading here that is even lower than your monthly payment at the school level for many students so this happens you know so there are institutions uh which will provide a kind of basic education because education milk these are considered as basic one okay now for this kind of uh, things government gives subsidy to the consumers you know under many circumstances for education you know you are paying say 100 rupees per month okay however the cost of your education is Uh, you know many many higher than 100 rupees so government is bearing the cost of cost of these higher education in your case okay so this is the idea so the, in this case the consumers are getting the subsidy now in terms of production it may happen that production of a particular commodity say milk is very very important and for that matter the government may give some subsidy to the sellers or the producers of the milk so that the milk price is very low okay so this is the concept so sometimes government gives subsidy to the sellers sometimes government gives subsidy to the buyers okay so a group needs to develop a project on subsidy however you will get better idea one side start doing the taxation part because reverse of tax will be subsidy you know so whatever points i am discussing in context of tax you have to bring all those points in your project when you will develop your project on subsidy so third project will be on subsidy okay and the final or the fourth project this time will be on public goods public goods so far most of the commodities we discussed about in the classes in the class that is private commodity marketable commodity okay however there are certain commodities for these commodities there will be no incentive to produce it in the market there is no incentive to produce these kind of commodities or the services in the market no private producer will like to produce this commodity okay so this may happen for example defense services police services okay so we want the commodity however we will not like to pay for this commodity okay so if the nature of the commodity is such that nobody will be willing to pay for that commodity for that kind of commodity or service there will be no market at all so government needs to produce this kind of commodities okay so there are special characteristics of these commodities and for that matter the commodities will be not sold in the market 
so one group needs to prepare their presentation on public goods and market failure okay public goods and market failure okay so for this project as well first i need to cover the taxation part we have to discuss more about the governmental intervention kind of things you know and at the end i'll discuss some a few points related to the difference between the marketable and non marketable commodities and after that it will be easier for you to develop the project okay so the four projects one will be on hoarding and black market second project will be on uh what i said okay price flow the third project will be on subsidy the fourth project will be on public goods and market failure so these will be four projects i hope you have written the title of the projects ma'am public goods and market failure market failure why there will be no market for the public goods okay so let's start with the introduction to taxation taxation means a mechanism by which the government will collect revenue from the individuals these individuals may be the sellers the individual may be the buyer so there is a mechanism tax is a mechanism by which the government will collect revenue from the buyers or the sellers or both taxation will be broadly of two types direct tax and indirect tax direct tax and indirect tax if tax is on income wealth or gift we call the taxation direct taxation directly a part of the income will go to the government or whenever you are purchasing a land a part is going to the government maybe you are familiar with the stamp duty stamp duty when whenever we purchase land houses we need to give some stamp duty okay that is a kind of wealth tax if i purchase this this amount will go to the government gift tax okay so if the amount of gift or worth of the gift exceeds a particular level in that case there will be a tax on that gift so these are the examples of direct taxation we are more familiar with the indirect taxation okay so maybe you know at this moment you may not have idea about the income tax because at this moment you are not earning which will be earning something which will be taxable your parents are bearing the tax income tax wealth tax you know uh, maybe you didn't purchase the property at this age if you did then also it's very good then you have some idea however your parents bought wealth maybe so you may have some idea about wealth tax or you may have some idea about the gift tax okay so you know however all of you are familiar with indirect tax all of you purchased some commodity and whenever you are purchasing some commodity in in on the package 
you know it is written mrp maximum retail price is this and on this commodity what is the gst what is the other uh, tax is written on the packet okay so it is marked what is the actual price what is the tax on it what is the gst on it that is what is the service tax on it all these things are written or if you go to some restaurant all of you enjoyed some service from the restaurant whenever you will get the bill you will get you know this is the bill for the food this is the price you are paying for the food plus this is the tax you are paying for the food and this is the gst the service tax you are paying for the food okay so whatever be the commodity whatever be the nature of the service i hope everybody is familiar with this kind of taxation which we call indirect taxation so indirect taxation is a kind of taxation where tax will be imposed on price of the commodity or value of sales tax will be either imposed on the price of the commodity or it will be imposed on value of sales okay so this is the meaning of direct and indirect tax any question it's clear to everyone now in this class our focus will be on indirect tax indirect taxation not on direct taxation because we are working with price mechanism we learnt about equilibrium price we learnt about the fact that if price is off equilibrium what happens so we learned all these things related to pricing so naturally when we are coming to the tax part our concern will be on indirect taxation because the price or value of sales that is coming in context of indirect tax only now there are two types of indirect taxes one is the ad valorem tax and another is the sales tax ad valorem tax and the sales tax in case of ad valorem tax the tax will be charged on the price of the commodity whereas in case of the sales tax the tax will be charged on the basis of the quantity sold we will start with the ad valorem tax and after understanding the mechanism of ad valorem tax we will move to the idea of sales tax okay so let's first start with ad valorem tax okay the the second type you know uh, of sales tax you know has other name this is also called the specific excise tax or what you started to some of you started to tell that is the specific excise duty okay tax or duty let's first consider the first thing that is the ad valorem tax the first variety of indirect tax it is imposed as fixed percentage of price on the commodity okay so what is this if p is the price of the commodity tax will be pt where t is the tax rate p is the unit price so tax 
tax will be charged on unit price as a percentage of unit price. So it will be P into T as a proportion of unit price. So it will be P into T if T is the tax rate. Okay, so ad valorem tax is imposed as a fixed percentage of price on commodity. For convenience, we assume that tax is collected from the consumers rather than suppliers. So here there may be two possibilities. Price is collected from the consumers, you know, or price is collected from the sellers. Whatever be the thing, you know, the same context, you know, uh, uh, the, both the things are same. Only when we are doing the graphs, etc., if I consider that price is collected from the consumers, I'll make a required change in the demand curve. On the other hand, if we assume that price is collected from the sellers, I'll make a necessary change in the supply curve. So that is the thing. However, total volume of taxation, the idea that will remain unchanged. In one case, I'll consider a shift of the demand. In other case, I'll consider a shift of the supply curve. So one by one, we, I'll discuss all possibilities. First, we are starting with the case. We are purchasing the commodity. And when I'm purchasing the commodity, I'm paying the tax, this kind of thing. Because we are familiar with this variety. I When I am paying for a commodity, I'm also paying the tax, okay? Or in other words, tax is collected from the consumers. So for convenience, we assume the tax is collected from the consumers rather than suppliers. When the tax is imposed, a fraction of price paid by the consumers is taken by the government, this P into T part. And the price net of tax is received by the producers. So producers will enjoy a price net of tax. So this is the unit price enjoyed by the sellers or the producers. Because government will collect P into T amount. Okay. So when tax is imposed, a fraction of price paid by the consumers is taken by the government and the price net of tax is received by the producers. We will start with analysis of a partial equilibrium. That is, we will consider only the commodity market. And again, we will consider a perfectly competitive situation relaxing the assumption that there is no government intervention. Government is very much there in our system. However, otherwise, the market is a perfectly competitive market. So we will consider a demand curve given by D. D will be the market demand curve representing the gross amount that consumers are willing to pay per unit for any given output. Before tax is imposed, producers receive all, receive all that consumers pay and assuming a supply curve is not, the equilibrium price and quantity we will mark at P0 and Q0. Okay, so we will have a demand curve marked by capital D we will mark a supply curve given by S0 and the initial equilibrium price and quantity I'll mark by P0 and Q0. So today I'll do up to this. Okay, we'll, we will draw the diagram up to this. However, just I like to show you the complete diagram. Today I'll draw this line and this blue demand curve. Marking this as the equilibrium, this will be the equilibrium price and this will be the equilibrium quantity, P0 and Q0. Okay. However, 
if at every price on the blue line a proportion is cut down a proportion is cut down p into t part if we cut down that portion there will be a movement of the demand curve from the blue line to the green line you know at this point the two lines will intersect each other because at this line at this point we are along the horizontal axis indicating price is equal to zero so when p is equal to zero so that p into t so the two lines will cut each other at this point at the horizontal intersection of the demand curve the two lines will cut each other so what is happening first we are starting with this demand curve and this supply curve s not d you know and this equilibrium e and this equilibrium price p not and the equilibrium quantity q not first we are starting this however what is happening along the demand curve these are the prices you know however i am telling that this will be not the price for this quantity rather this will be the price. for this quantity this will be the price that is we are taking the difference okay so what will happen the demand curve which was like this it will move to this direction it will move to this direction so there will be certain change in the demand curve and the story starts from this point what happens if the demand curve moves to the leftward direction what will happen to the consumer surplus producer surplus dead weight loss all these things we need to mark what will be the revenue going to the government what producers are getting so these things we need to learn so this we will do in the next class any question on the definition of the ad valorem tax no question okay very good so next day we will start talking about this okay any other question anything you want to know again when we are at the topics in context the reference is stiglitz and walsh you can only follow stiglitz and walsh if you like however when i am developing a particular topic sometimes what is happening the elaboration is not that good in stiglitz and walsh because that is principles of economics a general reading so you know i am marking for this particular portion sometimes you need to solve problems from this book sometimes you need to add something from this book so that you can develop your notes in a proper manner is the referencing part clear to all of you yes or no yes yes um okay everybody i think is in fear i'll be not able to manage these things there are too many references why this thing is happening while repetitively i'm telling you read one book first for the general thing those who asked me what are the books i'll buy i gave two books you know 
this uh, Stiglitz and Walsh you may buy and the book by Varian because after completing this, I'll start talking about consumer theory. And for the consumer theory, the main reference will be Varian. So this is the thing. Here the main reference is Stiglitz and Walsh. So at certain points, we are taking some points from some other text or from class lectures so that we can develop the idea perfectly. This is the thing. Okay, now somebody I think may have some question or- Ma'am, we have from, 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 from